aspects of Nasser's industrialization policies are relevant for Egypt today? Um, I think mainly would, I, I would have to say that the fact that back then the state played an, a crucial role in everything, like the state intervened in everything, deciding what to produce and what not. Of course, like the private sector was there as well. Like, so Nasser did not eliminate or er eradicate the private sector, but still he managed to like to intervene in the most important sectors, in the in industrial sectors. And um, like he did the same with, with agriculture. This is important now, particularly that we face this new liberal or new liberalization everywhere that because like the state back then played this crucial and direct role. Now that the new liberals claim that the state should not play any role and we witness what's happening. So like I think that's the main lesson like, that, that the state should play this direct role back. Like, I think there are a lot of lessons that we can draw, but ma mainly for me, it's the balance that the Nasserite in industrialization policy struck between being a state-led uh, industrialization process that managed to not get mired in the minutia of industrialization. So uh, the state largely kept its interference in the industry and uh, even though it controlled most of the uh, most of the industrial production in Egypt, it kept its interference to the larger establishments, to the massive factories that we see employing hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of people, and leaving the workshops and leading by example, allowing these factories to uh, to depend on small workshops that are usually privately owned to supply the small parts and components that they need, which meant that the state wouldn't be burdened with managing tens of thousands of small workshops, allowing for massive inefficiencies. But it also meant that there would be, the, the industrialization would kind of permeate into the Egyptian society. You, so you end up getting all these neighborhoods in Cairo where there is a, a weird specification in the, in the, uh, in the type of uh, professions that they practice. So in Kitka, for example, you end up with a lot of uh, with a lot of car mechanics, because a lot of people who used to work there used to work in uh, auto uh, uh, used to supply to auto manufacturers, and you see that all over Cairo and all over Egypt. You see that the permeation of industrialization in the Egyptian society. I think that would be a good thing to bring back, that the state interferes, yes, establishes industrial establishments, and a lets the people kind of manage how that permeates into their daily life. The Nasserite industrialization policy was a very impressive program uh, of its time. If you were implementing a similar program nowadays, what shortcomings and limitations would you be careful to avoid? Uh, definitely the bureaucracy or what, what people like Samir I mean, called the, the independent centers of power. I think that's what he called, right? Mm, exactly. uh, and like how everything had to be done through military officers who were not naturally fit for that role. And yeah, that's basically it. I think that's the main thing. I, I think for me it would be uh, to avoid the pitfall of eliminating the workers' representation because that, that's, how, that's how we end up seeing the experience collapses. So you have workers achieving these massive gains, enti entitlements to net profits in their companies, uh, healthcare, housing, uh, education, and rising wages. But at the end, since uh, in the trade-off that Nasser made in uh, his social contract, he ended up stripping their ability to represent themselves politically. What they gained by the economic hand, they end up losing with the political one. And it ends up being the only way for them to, to preserve that is through the riots that, uh, per, that kind of spread through the entirety of Sadat's reign. And I believe if, uh, if they had like, the ability to mobilize effectively and articulate their demands, that would have been much, much better because protests can be quelled by violence and you could end up assassinating or killing leaders or imprisoning them since they're usually it's it's not as organized but if 
if workers organizations had been allowed we wouldn't have seen that reversal that we see in the 70s 80s and lived through its effects today yeah but also if we are to reintroduce the, the, such an experience all over again we have to keep in mind that the nature of that experience was not radical enough that if we want to see and like a different change or a real ch or a more genuine change then we should do more than what was already done back then.